graders. So our first story this week for our reading group is I am Helen Keller. And um, I'm going to go through and read the story to you kind of like we would in class. Um, and I'm going to ask, well, ask some questions. And then I really want you guys when you're reading this story to think about those questions because they probably will come up on your guys' worksheet um, that you're doing. So we're going to read. I am Helen Keller. Um, it is a biography, so on this page, I also kind of want you guys to read that too because it tells us what the story is about, and we usually do that in class as well. So, it is a biography, and biographies tell us about real people's lives. Um, so when you're reading this Helen Keller story, it is about a real person and about her life. Um, it's going to have this, a, bi a biography is going to have it, events in order from the earliest to the latest, so from a baby or when she was younger until she was an adult. Um, information about why this person is important. So Helen Keller had a book written about her or a story written about her, so that means that she is someone important. Um, and ways this person had made it, has made a difference. So I'm sure this, or I know Helen Keller has made a difference, and so we're gonna learn about that. Um, we want to read to find out the most important ideas in each part. And so then we want to synthesize or put together these ideas in our mind to find out what the text really means. So synthesize, so we want to put the ideas and parts of the story, put them together and really try to understand what does this story mean? What does this text mean? Um, and why did the author write it? Or Yeah. Um, so here we go. So hopefully, while you're watching this, you're looking at the book too. That would be awesome. Um, and I can try to show you guys pictures. We'll get through this best we can. So here we go. It says, I am Helen Keller. Um, and it shows her on the very first page here. She is Helen Keller. And I want you to think about, in this story, as you read it, who is writing the story? So what's the point of view? Is it first person? Is it someone inside the story telling it? And that's when they're using I and me and my. Or is it third person point of view, someone outside of the story telling it and they would use we and he and she and them. Okay, so be thinking about the point of view. Who is telling us the story? Okay, so I am Helen Keller. When I was little, I was just like you. I loved to play, I loved my dog, and I loved seeing all the bright, beautiful flowers. I also loved copying people. At six months old, I could already say... What could she already say? I'm trying to figure it out. Um, so it's down here and it says, How die, how die yourself, T, 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 did she just ask for tea? How'd she do that? What can I say? There's no stopping her. So I want you to think about, does this story take place in the present or in the past? Has this already happened? Um, and if you look at the story, they have um, old fashioned looking ones, so it's probably in the past, probably has already happened. Um, And it says in the in this story, it says, when I was little, I was just like you. So what does Helen Keller mean there, just like you? Meaning that she's just like you, the reader? Probably. Um, so here we go, next page. I'm on page 18. On the day I turned one, I started walking. Oh, and there was another word I always loved. Wah, wah. Here's your water. Just like any other kid, right? There's one thing that made me different. When I was 19 months old, I got very sick. The doctor said I wouldn't live. I did live, but the sickness made me blind and deaf. Um, I, I, I read that as a baby, Helen loved playing and copying others. So on this page, on page 18, I read that when Helen was ni 19 months old, a sickness caused her to become blind and deaf deaf so all of a sudden she could not see or hear so from being born to 19 months old just a little over a year old 
um, she could see in here, but at 19 months, she became blind and deaf. This tells me that Helen is going to have to change, okay? She will probably face many challenges as she grows up, and I wonder how she's going to handle them. So let's read to find out. Page 19. This is how I see the world. Close your eyes and block your ears. I couldn't see anything or hear anything. That's right. Nothing. That, that would be so crazy. And that would be a big challenge to face. Going from being able to see and hear things to not seeing or hearing anything at all. Let's find out how she faces this challenge. Page 20. I know it seems scary. It was scary for me too. Back then, people didn't know how to deal with some someone who was deaf and blind. My relatives thought I was a monster. You see the way she behaves? She put her hand in my plate. She ate my food. Wah, wah, wah. I was trying to find her water. She threw the silverware too. She so poorly behaved. She shouldn't be here. They were right. I wasn't well behaved. I was extremely frustrated. In my dark world, I couldn't tell if anyone noticed me or cared about me. I couldn't see or hear what I was doing. So her relatives are, they're very frustrated frustrated with her and how she's acting and she's not being well behaved. But Helen is, she's also very frustrated, not being able to see or hear and wondering are people seeing me? Are they caring for me? So she's going through a tough time right now. By the time I was five, I'd figured out small ways to communicate. To say yes, I nodded my head. To, for no, I shook it from side to side. To say father, I motioned to put on his glasses. For mother, I rested my hand on my face. For baby sister, I did this. And when I'd shiver like I was cold, it really meant... Helen wants ice cream. So when she shivered, they knew that she wanted ice cream. So those are some awesome ways that she um, was able to figure out how to communicate and how to tell other people what she wanted um, at that time. So page 22. But even with those signs, I couldn't get my dog Belle to play with me. I don't know how to speak, so I couldn't call her. I just wanted to play with my dog. The saddest part was I got used to a dark and silent word, world. People told my parents to give up on me, that I'd never be good at anything. They didn't listen, though. After reading about another blind and deaf girl, my parents found something they hadn't had since I'd gotten sick. Hope. This says there are places that teach deaf and blind children. That's what she needs. She needs a teacher. We all do. Everyone needs a teacher. Still, I had no idea what the world was about to bring me. Page 24. I never had had a more important day. I was six years old. From the way my mother was hurrying, I knew something big was coming. I stood on the porch, waiting, feeling the sun on my face. Someone approached. I could feel footsteps. I reached out, thinking it was my mother. She pulled me into her arms. Her name was Anne Sullivan. She's the teacher who changed my life. So if you notice now, we had Helen as a baby to 19 months, and now she is six years old. And this, so for about five years now, she has been deaf, and she has a teacher. Her name is Anne Sullivan, and this teacher changes Helen's life. Um, and so this, um, meeting Ann Sullivan at six years old. This is a very, very important part of the story. Um, and it's going to change her life. So let's find out more. Page 26. In one of her first lessons, she gave me a toy doll. After letting me play with it, she spelled the, wor the word doll into the palm of my hand. So into the palm of her hand, um, she spelled the, wor the word doll. D-O-L-L. -L. Can you feel the letters? So she was, you know, D-O-L-L. -L. I could feel them, but I didn't know what the, what the letters or words were or how they worked. I didn't stop Miss Sullivan. One day we were arguing as she was trying to teach me the words mug and water. I got so upset I took my new doll and smashed it on the ground. I got angry a lot back then. 
It was so hard for me. I was so frustrated. Um, so I want you to think about why Helen is angry. Um, and why she's so frustrated. Like, she's, she's six years old. She, um, can't hear. Um, she can't see. And she's trying to learn these words, these simple words that for someone who can see and hear it, they are so simple. So think about how, why she's angry and why she's getting frustrated. Page 28. Never losing her patience, my teacher took me outside. At a nearby spout, she put my hand under the running water. In my other hand, she spelled the word W-A-T-E-R. Then she spelled it again, and again, and again, and again, and again. Water, 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 water. You understand, don't you? You understand! I understood. From there, I realized that everything had a name. Every object I touched seemed to burst to life. And now, when I wrote words in my teacher's hand, I had someone who could understand me. When you're learning something new, it's often hard, like learning how this new teaching and learning is working. I started with words. My vocabulary grew fast. Eventually, I learned the meaning of the word love. I had given my teacher some flowers, so she spelled it into my hand. I love Helen. What is love? Confused, I asked her. What is love? It is here, she spelled while tapping at my heart. I was still confused. It was hard to understand something I couldn't touch. It made no sense. Why couldn't my teacher show me love? But then she explained. You can't touch the clouds, but you can feel the rain and know how happy flowers are to get water. That is how love is. You can't touch love, but you can feel how happy it makes you. There, in that moment, my whole world changed. It was as if there were invisible lines that stretched between me and everyone else in my life. Close your eyes. You can feel it too. Your connection to your family and to your friends. Still, life was never easy. Without sight, I could see people. I couldn't see people's faces. Without sound, I couldn't hear their voices. One of my biggest uh, breakthroughs came when I learned to do what you're doing now, reading. Read without eyes? How is she going to do that? You'll read with your fingers. On the cardboard, you'll feel raised dots. The dots make letters, the letters make words. This word, this is the word for doll. So she's learning to read and she can't see, she can't hear. So she is feeling on a piece of cardboard. This isn't cardboard, but on a piece of cardboard, she's feeling these dots that are raised and they're telling her the letters the word, and what that word is. And so she's learning how to, um, how to read and how to read the word doll. And to practice, I match each word with its object and make sentences. This is my favorite game. We played it for hours. See if you can find a sentence. Girl is in the wardrobe. From there, I started reading real books, just like you. The only difference was my books were in Braille, which is a series of raised dots that you read with your fingers. These dots spell my name, H-E-L-E-N. Want to read your name in Braille? Here's the alphabet. So it has our alphabet and then it has the Braille alphabet. So if you used um, a piece of paper and a pencil and you could write your own name in, in Braille. And maybe the next video, I will have my name written in Braille for you guys. So now she's reading. This has Ann Sullivan. Her teacher has changed her entire world. She knows what things are now, and she's reading, and that is, that's a huge thing for Helen. To make reading even more fun, my teacher took me outside. She knew I loved feeling the sun on my face and, smell, and smelling the pine needles. I read my books, I read my books so many times, I wore down the raised dots. They were the Arabian Nights, Robinson um, Cruise, and one of my favorites, Little Women. In those pages, I met brave boys and girls who could hear and see. 
I'm not afraid of storms, for I'm learning how to sail my ship. One of Miss Sullivan's best lessons came when she showed me how to plant, how plants grow. Feel these buds? Some buds open fast, others open slowly. A flower can only bloom if it's watered. When I was nine years old, I wanted to learn how to speak. Even Miss Sullivan was worried about teaching me. She thought I'd get frustrated, but nothing would stop me now. To help me, Miss Sullivan took me to a teacher named Sarah Fuller. So now she has Ann Sullivan as a teacher and Sarah Fuller, who would put my hand to her face and let me feel her tongue and lip as she made each sound. So she, Helen Keller is touching Sarah um, Fuller's mouth and tongue so she can feel every word and um, feel how her tongue moves and how her lips moves as she makes the sounds. Yes, Helen, feel each sound like the vibrating strings on a piano. In an hour, I learned the letters M, C, A, S, T, and I. Um, I want you to think about why Ann Sullivan, her first teacher, would be worried about um, Helen learning to how to speak. Um, think back to when she learned how to read and what things were. She got really frustrated and it was really hard for her. Um, and I also want you to think about who, how is Ellen, Ellen, how is Helen as a person? Um, so she got, she was super frustrated in the beginning, but now she is to me, and I hope to you guys are understanding this as well. She's very determined to be able to speak and to be able to read. She is very determined and wants and wants that opportunity to be able to do those things. So I am on page 38. Now I could call my dog and she'd come to me. At, at my seventh lesson, I spoke this sentence, the one sentence that I'd repeat over and over. I am not dumb now. As I got older, I didn't just learn to speak English. I learned French and German. For college, I wanted to go to Radcliffe at Harvard University. Maybe she should wait another year. Deaf and blind people don't go to college. I'm going, I wouldn't argue. There's no stopping her. Um, so if you notice in our book, there have been those speech bubbles. And so those are telling you, and I probably should have showed you this earlier, um, those are showing you who is um, work or who's not working, who is, is speaking, okay? So she's trying to get into college right now. So again, if you notice, you know, baby, year old to um, six years old and now she's off in college um at harvard most most of my books weren't available in braille so that's braille is that raised um those raised dots so miss sullivan spelled spelled out many of the textbooks in my hand that's how much i loved learning and that's how patient and selfless miss sullivan was I became the first deaf and blind person to earn a college degree. I wouldn't be the last. As I grew older, I wrote 12 books and visited 34 countries. But the most important thing I did was to make sure that other people with disabilities could get the same education I had. So again, we wanted to talk about how, this is a biography, biography and it's written about Helen's life. And we wanted to, um, kind of learn about why is she so important? She was determined to read, to speak, even though she couldn't hear, she couldn't see. Um, and she wants to make, um, trying to think here, sorry. The most important thing she did was that she wanted to help other people with disabilities. And I kind of, I love that we're reading this story as we're doing this new type of learning for us. Um, because learning how to read and speak for Helen was very frustrating. It was hard. She, you know, she had a hard time with it at first. And this new way that I'm teaching your learning is very new. And it might be frustrating at times, but we need to, um, try our very hardest to, um, I guess, learn this way and for me to teach this way um, for a little while. So I love that 
we're reading this story because Helen's very determined to learn and I hope that we are too through this process. Um, page 40, we're almost done. In, the, in my life, they said I was different. They said I'd never be normal. But the truth is, there's no such thing as a normal life. Every one of us is like a flower that must be watered. Every one of us is full of potential. And every one of us can overcome obstacles. Look at me. Hear my words. I may not be able to see, but I have vision. I may not be able to hear, but I have a voice. So she's kind of saying no matter what is going on in our lives or um, or the obstacles, the challenges, the struggles we may have, we still can have a vision of what we want to get done and still have a voice to be heard. Um, and I think that's a, that's a pretty awesome thing to think about, even as second graders. Um, page 41. Think of your life as a hill that must be climbed. There's no correct path to get to the top. We are we all zigzag in our own ways. At some point, you'll slip, you'll fall, you'll tumble back down again. But if you get back up and keep climbing, I promise you, you will reach the top. Don't let anything hold you back. Our lives are what we make of them. There will always be obstacles, but there will always be ways around them. I am Helen Keller, and I won't let anything stop me. This is such an awesome story, and I'll try to finish up because we're already at like 22 minutes. Wow. Holy smokes. Okay. Um, we're being challenged right now to do this. You guys watch these videos. And I make these videos. You guys watch them and try to learn that way. That is a challenge for us. That is an obstacle. Um, but like she says, but there will always be a ways around them. We're going to figure out ways to work through this, to get this done. So you guys are still learning from Miss Mystic. And I am still teaching my super, super second graders. Um, so that is all. I will let you guys go. Um, I hope you were able to follow along. And I hope you guys understand these questions. Um, and I will be back again for another video so we can go over a couple other pages that are important. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope this helped. I will get better at these, I promise. See you later, super second graders.